I'm gonna begin this trick tip with a disclaimer. I've always found this probably one of the easier M80s. In fact, it's my favorite M80 of them all. It feels very comfortable and very natural to me. And it was only during a conversation with Felix Johnson last summer that I found out, I think I'm on my own on that one. Now, most people seem to think that this is quite an awkward trick, but it isn't, at least not to me. Once you've got all the components in place before you begin, it's actually pretty simple. There's a couple of little hints and tips that I'll give you throughout this video that should make it a bit easier. But before you get started, you need to make sure that you can kickflip cleanly, that you're comfortable rolling backwards in the kickflip position, and that you can do endovers going backwards. If you do uh, backwards monster walk, or even better, if you can do the jaywalk that I did in a previous video, all of those should go together and make this pretty straightforward. At least that's the theory. Your starting position for this trick is just like any other straight kickflip. Have both feet together in the middle of the board, perfectly side by side. Never have one foot in front of or behind the other as that causes the board to rotate as you flip it. Put them side by side and then just spin the back foot at the heel and then bring it back in so the side of the foot is gripping the edge of the deck while the heel is still on top. This is your starting position. It's actually the starting position that makes this trick so difficult to learn, at least when you're starting out. When you learn the kick flip, this seems like a really unnatural position because it's very easy to kick the board out one way or the other. You know, it wobbles quite a lot. And all of a sudden you've got to deal with this while rolling backwards and that can be a scary proposition for some. What makes it worse, however, is like the regular M80, the key to this trick is actually staring at the nose. If you look down at the nose throughout this trick, it forces you to keep your shoulders perpendicular to the board. I think that's why a lot of people find this difficult because you don't ever want your shoulders to be parallel with the board, like a normal riding stance. Everything should be at right angles. That way your hips can move pretty independently of your upper body and everything just falls into place. But the problem is when you're looking at the nose rolling backwards, there is a tendency for most people to lean forward. They bend at the hips. And as soon as that happens rolling backwards, you fall onto your face. The key is to make sure you just look down from the neck, keep your body completely in line and just look down from here. If I move around this way, you should be able to see it better. Everything's in line and I just look down from the neck. Never ever bend there, because as soon as you do that, you're gonna fall off. So because of this unusual setup, the biggest problem you're gonna have is entirely mental. You've gotta make sure that you're comfortable going into the trick. And the way I recommend dealing with that is finding a space like this. Somewhere nice and big, with no traffic, no people, no tiny kids on scooters. There's nothing to crash into, because you are gonna be rolling completely blind. Once you've got somewhere like this, you're safe practicing this one. All you've got to do is take a gentle push backwards. Put your front foot on the board ready for the kickflip and just push. Try and stay relaxed. Try and stay comfortable and loose. Once you can do that, then you've got to be able to do it while looking at the board. And this is where the neck comes in. As soon as I bend forward here, I'm going to lose the board. So I keep my body straight and look down. Again, as soon as I move here, I've lost it. As long as I'm comfortable doing that, all I've got to do is a regular kickflip. That's all there is. Because we're not popping off the tail, there's no weird change in technique, there's no shunt in momentum, it's not going to throw me off the back. I just roll backwards and do a kickflip like any other kickflip I've ever done. Push down with the front foot, push across with the back foot, and jump in that direction reorientating my hips to land in a regular riding position. The fact I'm rolling backwards is completely irrelevant. It's all there is. Once you can do that comfortably without panicking, then it's time to start throwing in the pivot and getting the M80. At this point, if you can do a regular M80, you're pretty much halfway there. The technique is fundamentally the same. Your shoulders remain still and your legs move around independently below your upper body, 
first swinging round to get the catch and then swing it back in the other direction in order to get that 180. But when you do a regular M80, you're staring at the nose and that gives you a guideline for your back foot. It gives you a target. You know exactly where you're aiming for. Now, obviously when you're rolling backwards, you don't have that advantage. You can't see your landing at all. It's totally blind. And I think this is why most people struggle with this trick. If my shoulders have to face this way in order to be able to get this front side twist, I can't start looking for my tail. If I'm trying to find it while I'm on the board, I'm rotating my body the wrong way. And if I look between my legs for it, I'm leaning forward at my waist, I'm gonna lose my balance. As I do the kickflip, I have to bring my back foot back and I have to know where that tail's gonna be. I can't rely on sight. This has to be completely blind and it has to be entirely on faith. I have to be very comfortable with my board in order for this to work properly. Again, like the regular M80, this whole trick is about creating tension. You need to generate tension throughout the body and then it should all work relatively naturally. What I mean by that is the reason we're keeping these shoulders facing this way is that as I extend my back leg back to try and get onto that tail, I should feel this twist. I should feel tension through here. This is not a natural position for your body to be in. And it wants to resolve that tension by coming back to a regular stance. So what I want to do after I do the flip is bring my back foot down first, just by a fraction, just a teeny bit more weight on this leg than the front one. Because these shoulders are facing that way, as I hit, this tension can resolve. This front leg can start swinging back to a more natural stance. The difficulty is going past that line. I'm gonna connect and I'm gonna start swinging and I'm gonna to to push that last bit. That is the only bit of that whole movement where I've, I actually feel like I'm doing anything. I'm pushing through the last 90 to 45 degrees just so I can roll away. And you'll notice that as I roll away, I'm still facing that direction. My torso isn't doing anything. It's all in the legs. If you're anything like me, I imagine the biggest problem you'll have is coming up short from time to time. You'll probably see it in this trick tip. Every so often, I don't get a full 180. And to be honest, I wouldn't worry about that too much. As long as you roll away relatively smoothly, don't stress over it. Aim for a perfect 180, but don't beat yourself up too much if it's slightly short. But the reason this happens is because you need to keep your weight on your back leg a little bit longer than is really comfortable especially when you're going at speed. And you really don't wanna lean back as you do this. So there's a tendency to keep your weight slightly forward and by doing that, you don't have all the time to get this full swing. Now, if you do keep your weight too far back, if you do lean backwards, it only ever goes wrong. <laughs> you can't stay on it, you just get thrown off. So, Falling short from time to time is much more acceptable than the alternative. If everything else has fallen into place, you can ride backwards in the kickflip position comfortably. You can do the kickflip. You know what that pivot feels like. You can get the catch. You're on the right place on the landing. But something still seems to be going wrong. There's a good chance the issue is speed. Because most freestyle tricks are really speed sensitive and this one, definitely falls in that category. If you go a fraction too slow, this becomes a lot more difficult to get round because basically you're transferring that backwards momentum into this rotation. If you go too slow, you're gonna to struggle to go round the whole way. Now, the same thing applies at the other end of the spectrum. If you go too fast, this gets away from you really, really quickly. It's not fun doing it fast, it gets really scary, and it, it just goes wrong almost every time. The other thing to bear in mind is the surface you're doing it on. If you are on something really slippery, you know, say for instance, high polished concrete, a curling ring, something along those lines, catching into a front side pivot while going backwards, that's probably gonna slide out on you. 
If that is your regular skate spot, consider moving to softer wheels, a 95A for instance, as opposed to a 99. It means you've got to be much more precise because you can't let the front wheels drag, but it also means you're less likely to fall over, go over backwards, hurt your spine, hurt your head, whatever. It's much better to force yourself to do it clean than risk something going wrong and getting injured on this trick. For obvious reasons, this isn't a beginner's trick. This is not a simple one to do. I find it very comfortable, but I've been doing it a very long time. Now, if you're trying this and you keep missing the tail, you can't find it, and that could be one of two things. Either one, you just don't know your board that well. And I don't mean that to sound insulting, it's just you need a certain amount of familiarity with your board. You need to know exactly where that tail's gonna be. But it could also be the second option in that your board's not very well suited for this trick. Now I've skated a lot of boards over the years. I've gone from very long to very short. And it's definitely easier on a shorter board with a flatter tail. I'm not saying you can't do this on a street board, but if you have to stretch too far, you remember how tense you're gonna be, how twisted you're gonna be. If you're having to reach really far to get the tail, that becomes very uncomfortable. Similarly, if the tail is really steep, then the board's not gonna be twitchy enough to make this very comfortable. So again, this is something that's gonna work a lot easier on a dedicated freestyle board than a street board. You also definitely don't wanna try this with loose trucks. If you're trying to catch this for that front side pivot on very loose, very floppy trucks, there's a hell of a chance that you're gonna get a wheel bite and you're gonna fall over backwards. They don't have to be rock solid, they don't have to be 80s style, you don't have to weld your truck shut. But definitely, definitely don't do this on floppy trucks. You're only gonna end up getting concussed. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> that might be the scariest thing I've ever done. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> 